answer a couple of things. There were some questions that were circulating online over the weekend. Uh, just want to review the process with you and where we're headed. The whole goal of this is to make sure everybody is heard in the process. But we do have an outcome in mind. And the outcome is through the process that we develop, it's close to a shared version, you know, vision as possible. Hopefully consensus. It's not consensus we want to make sure that you all feel that you're heard and that you all have input into this, this process that we're going through on sort of trying to develop the vision. What will happen at the end of the process is designs and illustrations will be submitted to us by uh, Johnson Associates just based upon everybody's input. And that will be used to inform design standards and other working documents that the selectmen may then use, and we're not saying will, may then use to create an RFP that reflects your vision and the design characteristics that you want in the vision. So your values will be incorporated into that RFP. The RFP will have a committee that will review it and make sure that it meets the standards that we all set. The selectmen are not giving, being given carte blanche in this. This is your process. You are defining what you want to see. The selectmen are there to implement your will at the end of the process. So the RFP is our ultimate goal. The vision is yours. So tonight, I just we all have you know strong opinions here. If we can keep our comments as brief as possible, so everybody has a chance to speak, that would be very helpful. And again, your role in all of this is to be advocates with the community and ambassadors for the process. Make sure that people know that you're involved that you're, you are being heard, and if they're interested in giving input, they should go ahead and tell you what they think. Thanks, and turn it over to Peter. All right, we're just getting our story straight over here. This was presenting once, but uh, thank you for all coming back under these uh, snowy conditions. Hopefully you're all relaxed from shoveling. Not too relaxed, but we'll try to keep you uh, keep you awake as we go through this. So, is there anybody here who wasn't at the work group meeting last time? A couple people? Yeah. And you've been invited, hopefully, by <laughs> someone in the town. Uh, so, yeah, we'll give you, uh, is there anybody who wasn't at the big public meeting at the beginning? A couple people. So we had uh, a great turnout that first night of January with like 130 people in the big room over here. And we broke up into small groups, as you might have heard, um, to talk about kind of the strengths and weaknesses of the town center. We got some some good impact uh, in, in, input, which is sort of summarized in the, uh, the draft report, which we sent around yesterday. And you can look at that um, later. Uh, and then we, as you know, part of this process is the formation of this working group to involve you as stakeholders not just in sort of reviewing what we give you, but being part of the process from the beginning. So the idea is that you will help to, and are in the process where we're going to continue tonight, is really looking at the information that we've gathered and making sure that you all feel like this is enough information to move forward and make good decisions about Upton Center. So oftentimes, uh, especially these days, we can't agree on what to do because we can't even agree on what exists. So we're just going to try to figure out, do we, do we all agree on what's going on with Upton Center right now? If not, what do we need to know? So we've collected a lot of information already. Uh, so we're going to start tonight by sort of reviewing what we didn't get a chance to talk about the last meeting. For those of you that are new, you can look at some of the details in the, the draft report. And so what we tried to do is really take everything that was in the PowerPoints and give it some context in, in terms of an introduction to each of the maps and some information about what those maps are showing and what they need. Uh, so we're going to fairly quickly go through the remaining uh, sort of information categories. We're going to have a presentation about the economic information. Uh, and then what we really want to focus on tonight is turning from this is what we know about the town center to talking about what it means in terms of the values of the community. Uh, for, ex for instance, we have a map of wetlands and floodplains that comes right through Upton Center. Uh, and there's some facts of, you know, it either is in the wetland or the floodplain or it's not. But what we need to talk about 
with you collectively is what does that mean for redevelopment of the, the town center? Does that mean we need to respect a, a 200 foot setback as if we were out in the woods? Uh, do we need a, obviously that's probably going to eliminate any possible redevelopment of the center. Um, and if, if it's not a 200 or 100 foot setback, what is an appropriate way to deal with those sensitive natural resources? And that's really a values decision, right? That's a, that you can help us make. I mean, to some extent, we have to follow state law. But within that, the Local Conservation Commission has a fair amount of leeway. Um, is anybody here on the Conservation Commission? Excellent. Yay. So we'll, we'll get official opinion. Unofficial. Un unofficial opinion. <laughs> so I'm not about that. So that's, that's essentially where we want to be tonight, to sort of start moving from just the facts to what do the facts mean for us in terms of what we're going to move forward with. And then we'll talk about the, uh, our proposed agenda for the public workshop in a couple of weeks on the 23rd, because it's three weeks from this past Saturday, and what we hope to do for that and get your feedback on that, and then uh, enlist you all in helping to publicize that. Any questions so far? Yeah. Um, actually, based on what you said, um, what is the calendar for uh, after the open meeting, particularly the RFP? Is there going to be before or after town meeting? What will town meeting do for this end of the process? Are you going to ask some questions for this office day? Um, <clears throat> where we'll be is uh, the, the RFP would be after town meeting. So there is a warrant in the article to authorize the selectmen to start the RFP process. So nothing gets done at town meeting other than continuing what we're trying to do now in developing the RFP and giving guidance to the selectmen in terms of you know what we want to see. Um, so keep in mind that the only thing that the selectmen have control over are the town-owned properties. So the RFP goes out to private developers. Not the town isn't doing this development. Private developers will respond to the RFP. The RFP will be very structured in the sense that it will have what you have incorporated into your vision in it. And then the, the, the RFP committee and the selectmen would review the proposals and then select, theoretically select a successful respondent. So we need to make sure that it's approved. Yes. And Derek, do you want to talk about the, um, the community center library project and how that fits? Sorry to surprise you with that, but yeah, I can talk about it. would be good to get an official word on that. Uh, well, I would say that there's been a, a lengthy, multi-year discussion um, here in Upton about uh, trying to find a new library. So there's been three iterations of building a new public library. And some folks, I think, have been here from trustees to try to speak to better than I could. Um, those have all failed for many different reasons. Uh, the, the 2018 version of that, the Board of Selectmen uh, has been working with the library trustees. They jointly appointed a feasibility committee. And so right now they're going through a process and um, they just selected a designer um, to develop conceptual designs of a municipal community center. And that community center would incorporate, uh, I can help me speak to this, um, that uh, community center would incorporate public library, um, the senior center, and then potentially a few other smaller municipal services. Um, there's been a couple of different um, parcels that have been identified as possibilities in the town center that would be incorporated into this, I would say, long-term vision of uh, what a town center should look like. So this feasibility committee is going to work, I would say, for the next four to five months, going through a similar process like this, um, and then developing conceptual ideas so that they can take those ideas to town meeting in November and potentially go for um, design, bid, build money. So design, bid, build money is really asking approval at town meeting um, to design the building, to bid the building, and then go through the construction period. Right, so it's a great opportunity for this group to have some input, we hope, and, and, and vice versa, because it's going to be a major player in the downtown, uh, ultimately. 
great opportunity. And, and, so. and I'll just to mention just one of the ideas of um, the senior center, as you all know, is located at Mill House, which is up in the West Upton area. The idea is, as we've been talking about creating a, a more of a vibrant downtown area, is to attract um, a spectrum of ages. So not just you know young children attending the library, but you know older adults who would typically attend the senior center. So to attract them in the downtown center to again create that more vibrant. Right. And one of the things we'll talk about a little bit later is with the structure of the uh, eventually workshop on the 23rd is to actually have a, a station or a table set up with uh, representation of the architects to talk about the library so people can start. And it's going to be the same process. You know, what are the, what are the facts about the libraries? You want to all understand what's involved and what's possible and what's not possible and then start thinking about how it could fit in physically to the, the village center. So I hope you mentioned who the consultant is for that project. Well, it's, uh, I don't think contracted yet, but it's we're part of the team, which is nice. And it's the Trowski Architects out of Marion. So. so there's a sign sheet going around. Um, there are two names on the back. It's an alphabetical order by first name. And if your name is highlighted, you know what it means. We don't have an email address for you. Okay, so um, we sent out the draft report yesterday, um, or was it this morning? Um, sorry about the mix-up there with the link. So I'm going to walk through the draft report. I'm going to skip over the things that we've already talked about. Um, the draft report is covering basically just the existing conditions. So more to add to as we go along about what is desired and the vision for the area, but this covers the past plans that have been done and also things that are on the ground that can be mapped and measured. Um, and I get updates of who, how many people have downloaded this, and I've got like 100 downloads today, so I know some of you at least had a chance to download it. Um, so this is you know, the introduction of the project area, has a couple of base maps. This is a review of past plans. It's worth reading, I think. We wrote this in part to give you an overview of the kind of plans that go into the planning process and how things get implemented. Um, so related projects, we talked a little bit about the TIP project last time um, and also the Complete Streets um, funding program. So just to mention it again, there's a a major transportation project in the design phase for Route 140, essentially from from Grafton to Milford, I believe. Um, so it's it's the, William Street to Brook Street. William Street to Brook Street. Great. So it, it, this area is included in that. Um, it's it's called a road resurfacing project, but because it's going through an urban area, Mass DOT will require full design plans and will consider things like pedestrian accommodation and intersection improvements. Um, so that's a pretty major opportunity for the town to have street improvements in this area. Um, and it's on the schedule for um, 2021. Um, design has not yet begun. There's a whole formal process of, of um, public hearings that go with the Mass DOT project. So I encourage you all to show up at those meetings with whatever recommendations come out of this project. Um, the Complete Streets funding. Can I ask yeah. one, one quick question on the, uh, the Hopkinson and Hartford Avenue uh, project? So the schedule for 2020, is that a county year or is that the Massachusetts fiscal year? The Hartford <coughs> Avenue of High Street Hopkinson <coughs> project was scheduled to build to begin in 2019. They moved it to spring of 2020. So spring of 2020. So it's a calendar. When we say, when I say a year of these projects, is that? In this context, we're talking about spring of 2020, so calendar. The calendar. And just if I could, I met with the DOT to discuss the 130, the one, the Route 140 resurfacing project, and we talked about the, this downtown intersection, and they committed to looking at that intently to try to redesign this intersection, recognizing that it's uh, an unsafe travel. Is a traffic circle an option? Say again. Is a traffic circle roundabout an option? 
Um, they, that is one of the options on the table. All right, so then complete streets is another transportation improvement in Massachusetts. Um, it has three steps to it. A town has to adopt a complete streets policy, which Upton has done. In the second step, the town produces what's called a prioritization plan, where they lay out projects that will improve um, transportation system for all modes, which means pedestrians, bicyclists, free, um, emergency services, personal cars. Um, so Upton has a prioritization plan. It was done by Beta Group, which is an engineering firm. Um, they worked with the, the former town administrator and also the current town administrator and the former DPW director and the current DPW director. Um, so that was approved by MassDOT in January. And then the next step in the project process is for Upton to apply for up to $400,000 for funding for um, for some of those projects, for one or more of those projects that are cut up to $400,000. Um, so the first thing, the, the highest priority in the prioritization plan, the highest priority projects um, were improvements around the high school, I believe. And then in the third year of the program, there are improvements slated for, um, for this area. But it's important to note that the funding program itself wasn't, isn't fully funded beyond this coming year, I believe. So that third year is fairly theoretical. Um, depending on, on the state allocating the money for the program to continue. Um, so as part of that project, Beta Engineer produced a map of what they call destinations in Upton, and this is a sample of that. So this is the um, this is Upton Center here, right? There's the pond passing through the middle of it, um, and so they identified a watershed around key destinations in Upton Center. And I thought this was worthwhile looking at just in terms of does this fit with your idea of what essentially Upton Center is in terms of the area that you would draw. Um, people walking to or biking from um, the neighborhood surrounding it. So stretching out to, to School Street, um, up to about River Street, down to, I believe this is called, is this is called Piccadilly? Yes, yep. One place a little beyond. Does that approximate area make sense to you all? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That library signal sign is not in right place at all. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> so, a little bit of not making sense, but otherwise, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so I think what, what that means to me is that the people who live in this area will have a different relationship to Upton Center than the rest of town, right? Because these are people who could potentially be interacting with it on a more daily basis. They might be arriving on foot or on bicycle instead of arriving by car. And also, the, any impacts that spill out from Upton Center will be more immediate on those people than they will be for the rest of town. Um, these are the streets that were, that were, were their potential projects in the Complete Streets Prioritization Plan. Um, they're mostly, they're shown in blue, and they're predominantly sidewalk improvements and also um, program improvements. So we're going to programs up to compliance with the um, Americans with Disabilities Act. So that's it. Those projects would take many, many years to build out. We go into you know years four and five beyond the prioritization plan. Um, if that program is not funded, then it takes several years to get through one year, right? Upton isn't funded every year. That's many, many years of work for, for Upton. Uh, one of the focus areas for the Complete Streets Prioritization Plan was Upton Center itself, and Beta produced this concept plan for redoing sidewalks in the area. The map is turned so that north is to the right. Um, so this is Route 140, this is Grove Street here, um, this is North Main Street. 
Yes. Wrap this up. Wrap this up. Yep. Ish. 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 <laughs> Just put up the Everyone will know where you are. Yes. <clears throat> what is up after like? Okay. So, um, <laughs> so the main contributor to the event there is this. Currently, there's a little strip of parking way right here, right? That's closed off. And there's an expanded sidewalk sort of pedestrian plaza there with some on street parking that's adjacent to Route 140. Uh, then there's a little bit of um, change to the sidewalk here, bumping it out a bit, putting a little green space. Same up at the intersection of uh, Town Hall Road and North Main Street. Some parking is added along the, this edge of the common, and then sidewalks there and there with the programs. So, that's, um, anybody have thoughts about that plan? Question for you, the parking and the ratting, does that take away from the green space on the front? I can't tell based on the plan, my guess is no, but I, I can't tell based on the plan. Um, based upon the, the width of that road, I think so. Yeah. Probably close to 35 feet. Yeah. <laughs> And I know that the plan, part of the intention of the plan was to not take away part of the work. So there's there's no net loss of space. Space isn't that plan. But the concept of this plan is based on us not, so the design process we're starting today, we're not making major changes in the layout. For example, we talked about Dover's and Grove Street. So this is just an idea of getting that new green work. Right. Well, that's sort of the next question. So when we had certain facts that there's about nine or 10,000 cars per day. Um, if we look at it according to complete streets policies, which is basically trying to accommodate pedestrians as best you can, you get a map which looks something like this, right? It's sort of probably doing the, the easier things in terms of closing off obvious driveways and trading sidewalks. Uh, but the question for this group is really what are we, what is the statement that we want to make about basically traffic and, and circulation and parking in the town center. Oh, sorry, could, could you just go over some of the special things? Where 140 is and where North Main Street is? Um, this is 140 here. Yeah. This is North Main Street. And you can okay. add more parking on North Main Street. What's the gray area on North Main? Um, the gray areas are all sidewalks. So that's Don't a they thing. already get up sidewalks? No, there's no No, right there. It's if you look at this picture, sorry. So right in that picture was none. Go past where the bond is. It kind of picks up at that first house and it's going out. And there's telephone poles in the side. Okay. Oh, well, no, actually slightly beyond the river, but then I think it stopped before the cemetery, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can actually see it on here. There's no sidewalks here now. How old is that picture? I think this is five years old. How old is it? Five years old. I haven't changed so much. So at the, at the workshop, we're going to have a station to look specifically at this plan and other plans and have a chance to sort of think about it in detail. I guess the question is, for, for you, what do you think is important to do in terms of traffic and, and sidewalks in the town center? And that's sort of a larger question which we'll talk about for the next few months. But it would sort of shape the discussion. Yeah, yes. The first thing is speed. Speed yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If you're on the desk, you're walking out here. I've had somebody pass me on a double line in front of the town hall. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no respect for people going through the town center. Right. Someone had the idea about moving Grove Street, and I actually thought that was a very good idea, too. Right. <coughs> the, tra the traffic needs to be slowed down by VFW, not at the center itself. Right? Yeah. Because, you know, the parking area there and all the events that are held there, the kids go to the, to 
the playground, you know, what we need to do is figure out how to slow traffic before it comes to town, yeah. not slow it at the center. So then you see yeah. North Street, Warren and Milford hanging that left, you really can't see around past the liquor store that well. And it, that's a crazy intersection to begin with. Because everyone wants to be polite and let you go, and you don't know. Uh, yes. I think my question was, and I, I understood part of my vision was, we're going to look at the town and all of them decide, yeah, we need a library and a community center and some space for retail, or we do a Catholic church. That comes first to this group. And then where the sidewalks go, follow. So this is a kind of, this is a fact, right? This is a kind of based on the facts you took about. That's the amount. Right. We, we may want to change the facts. So let's not confuse the people at the open house by saying, this is the plan, but this is the plan too, and they're not compatible. That's, that's a good point. Can I ask about yep. Grove Street? A couple of people mentioned a couple of things. I mean, why do the police and, and the, the state have to be involved? And somebody else mentioned there's a group there and there's a conservation committee. That's, I'm, I'm just asking my questions that I couldn't answer. And, I think we'll hold on to that and okay. more about the okay. wetlands and so on. Okay. I don't mean to sound like a Debbie Downer, but I feel like we're not thinking big enough. This doesn't look like a significant improvement to what we already have right now. This essentially looks like that same, but if I'm looking at this correctly, where that um, the lower left for the green space is, is the library right there? Yep, that's a library right there. So we're still looking at the same problems that we have right now, which is when we approach coming this way, I'm new here, so I don't know the names of the streets, but isn't that a really awkward intersection right there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 for sufficient space to maybe consider rotary, that's right. the one guy. So, yes, I'm green and blue with your, your realization there, but how do we capture that as kind of a, a value or a goal for this process? So, I think it's sort of a thing that is. And this essentially looks like what well, we're throwing in some sidewalks. Right. So maybe. But this was from the street side, that's not. Yeah, that's what I wrote in the right now. But we're going to confuse people if you present both. I agree with what you have there. But I think that the side of the road is so. We have a few things first, and then everything else goes on from that. Well, so, so let me twist it a little bit and see if you guys agree with it. Um, in previous meetings, we've heard that sidewalks are important. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. This does show sidewalks, and it shows a complete sidewalk network. What it doesn't show is changes to the intersections to um, to improve the traffic movements of vehicles. It, I mean, it does to some degree. It's, it's changed the intersection alignment a little bit here and a little bit there, but not to the degree that I hear you saying that is necessary. I think, too, that the sidewalks, not to be critical of this plan, are sort of a sidewalk to nowhere in this sense that it, all you're going to do is maintain the status quo of what buildings, facilities, and whatnot are available in the center, that probably would work. But I think what the might be was how do we change make Buckton Center truly the center of our town, realizing the town is, you know, there's a big chunk of land in a central mass. So yeah. this, becomes, this becomes the town's calling card, but the entire town has to be taken into consideration if you're looking to expand the tax base and economic. You don't want to put everything in the center, because last week or last month or whatever, I thought I heard a lot of people saying is they want to be able to have a place that is family friendly and for the residents of the town to sort of mingle and do things together. Uh, for your business, you may have one or two additional business here, but I think you should be trying to attract businesses in the other parts of town that are so zoned already. Right. But if you want to think big and have even money, I'm going to work for your country that and that school and business street, slowly going down, making work for businesses that we're putting in. Is that what I mean? That's, 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 that
there's a, just something else to throw in there in terms of making some more area that would actually create more space that could be green too and some more gathering space too. Um, there's a lot of options here, but there's a lot of streets going through. And yes, if we have more things that people are stopping for, then they won't be going through either. And while we have a great library and a great senior center or a great meeting room, which I know we're trying to meet with our, um, with our vision as well, people will stop. And then they won't have to leave that to go get something to eat and go somewhere else because there's nothing in town. They'll, they'll have it there too. And when they come to the library, the senior center, There'll be a couple stores, there'll be a place to get coffee, there'll be a place to get lunch, and that's, I think, what we're looking for. So we've got to all move on to the left side. So, um, so another project that's ongoing, as was mentioned earlier, I'm just going to remind um, us, looking at this library community center, there's a feasibility study just going on the way. They have been passed feasibility studies for the library. Um, I just I encourage you guys to read through this um, because there's good information about what's happened in the past if you're not aware of it. Um, the most, I think, important upshot for this project is that we're still melting uh, away of the libraries and currently um, has some challenges regarding academic accessibility. Also has some structural problems. Um, so this is basically this shown here is a plan for a minimal renovation to make it handicap accessible. Um, and there was that was a two hundred and ten thousand dollar plan. And then there was a plan outlines with a full renovation of the building, including upgrading the structure so that it can um, essentially be safe on the second floor for use. Um, and that's about a $3 million, $3,600,000 project to upgrade that to become a um, fully functional library with the um, historical side of offices and easy on the third floor. Um, so that's it. And I think the current approach for feasibility study, I'm not totally up on the scope for that, but I think that's to develop a new program for the library where there was a new sense of what the needs would be, and then some floor plans for a lot of that um, for either a new site for a new site. To consider a couple options for new sites. So, I mean, we, we get a lot, a lot of library and community center projects, and it's always a lot of sticker shock, which probably is what they realized the last couple of times, but it's just a lot of money to build anything. Um, is, so I guess the, the question for this group is, um, do you have strong feelings about putting the library and community center in, in up and center? And, uh, do you think people in town are willing to pay three, four, five million dollars for something like that? Or should the group really focus more on renovating the business and trying to do it as cheaply as possible? Yeah. So I mean I think that that's I think there are two parts of that, right? Like you just said, there's the library question, but there's also the question of of this building. This is what it used to look like. Um, so what's the value of that building to the town? How essential is it that it get renovated? How essential is it that it be used? Is it essential that it be a municipal use? Could it be a private use? Um, There's a very lot of that. As far as how we are going to improve the senior center and the other part of the library, I don't want to walk into that, but I'm not sure that's how I'm not sure. So that was many years ago, I guess. All of them are the same. Yeah, it's just a very nice Right. Yeah. Did you have a comment on that? Right. Um, so there's a ton of background about the libraries, and a few times it, it, we couldn't get the funding. We got the grants, but we couldn't get the funding. Right. But the dollars were much more than 3.6 million. Uh, no, no. They were more in, uh, we were talking about 22,000 square foot building with men, and we were talking about 14,000 square foot building. To get the grants, you have to really need the needs assessed. 
assessment. And I don't think there's anything we can do downtown now to meet the needs assessment to get any grants. So we're going to have to fund it ourselves. The 3.6 million is actually not that much, which um, we've been talking about 5 million plus in the other building. Um, so at the town meeting, do I understand this of a joint building? And if we can get a build, big enough building to meet the library needs and the senior citizen needs, that would be great. Um, maybe Milton will soon gets taken down and gets built on that site with the new land that's behind it. Maybe it goes across the street. I don't know. There could be, I guess that's for this group to try to think about. There's going to be a, a lot of things that can be done. Um, but one of the things I do want to mention, and I I love the literature that you sent us that came out of the last meeting, and I thought it was wonderful to have all that background and all this background here. But one of the things that I came away from that last meeting was that introduction that you had us do. We talked a lot about the constituents that are represented in this room and the people who came forward to work on this project and do this kind of revisioning thing represent a lot of parts of the community. And one of the things that was striking to me was how many people stood up when we asked about being library users. And we begin to realize that if you're not a library user, you may not realize how much it's used, but thousands of Upton citizens use that every year over and over and over and over again throughout the year to meet very deep and diverse learning needs, cultural needs, work needs, all kinds of things like that. And so I'm hoping that when we're looking at our redesign, we're trying I love looking at what other communities have done, but I, wanna, I want us to meet the needs that we have, and I'm hoping that we're really going to specify what all of those are, because some of these projects have come before capital planning for 25, 30 years already, mm -hmm. and we have a chance to meet some of these needs now. Um, does the lobby have to be in the center of town? Well, the background is no, but we tried to have it with London. Last, just recently, we tried um, again to have another site to go for grant, and the only two sites available to us, and one of them was for $700,000, were either too rocky, too ledgy, or too wet. So there aren't pieces of land just around for people to give us or for us to buy. So where is there is stuff going on this site? I think people would love it in the center of town if, you know, if everything was easy to do. Um, but we have tried doing other places and there really isn't any place. The last time it didn't fail because of money, it failed because you couldn't find a site. Mm -hmm. And so now, that's why we finally went, okay, let's redesign what we have and see if we can do it. We can get like 7,200 square feet, I think, out of that, maybe even more with the third floor, and then the museum fits in there too. Now, if something better can be done across the street or something else that has a community center there too, that's great. But uh, you know, as a library trustee, I need to make sure that the library services are met for the people in the town, and a lot of people want them. You know, now, we not only are the people who came to do this work, but we really represent who's out there. And so, um, so what, are, what are the implications of these two bits of information? One, um, that the building is, you know, requires work, and two, that it's been difficult to find a site for a library in the town. What are the implications for a plan on the town center? And as the years go by, the dollar amount goes up. Huh? Yeah. Exactly. And how many years has it been since? So what are the implications the for town center planning? Years. Well, the implications In 1998 we started. The implication that strikes me is that when the town owns that particular lot of land along with the park lot, and so if you can either remodel or re demo and rebuild a new structure to meet all those needs, you save the land cost. You haven't, you haven't taken, bought other land, pulled it off the tax rolls, and where to put another town piece of property on there. Because um, the town doesn't pay property tax on itself, I assume. Um, so I think if you. Plus, it meets the intent of revitalizing downtown. Uh, you know, if, if I understood you right, if you're saying you knock down Kristen and the building. I'm, I'm suggesting you could either remodel it, remodeling and adding on or whatever to that building is, is feasible. You could do that, or if it's not, 
you have the plan, you could demo that building and build a new. Yeah, but the only trouble with that is that then you don't have a library in town to say you finish the new. Well, even if you run it. It so is structurally sound. That's one thing we know. We had a structural analysis done. It's structurally yeah. sound. Mm -hmm. To be made for a library, you need for right. others. No, no, well, I read, yeah, so the point is, the town owns the land. Forget the building for a second. The town owns the land. And so by reusing that lot of land, you're not reducing the tax rules. And yes, the town is going to probably need to have a library for a short amount of time while you do something, if, unless you build on yet another site. Did yeah. I think you misunderstand something? Is the town planning to acquire four million? Is the town planning to acquire four million street? It's an option, but it, it has not been acted on. Yeah. It, it's, 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 it's one of it's the it's things that it's, it's important in the vision of this, you know, the group is that that's a, a critical parcel that would be very helpful for the select to know because right now, you know, if they came forward and said we want to buy their property, we would say for what? Why would you want to do that? We have enough of these things downtown, but you know. It seems to me that we're, we're talking, we keep talking around that these are social connections, one of those social connections in town. The town needs to be a place where everybody comes, feels welcome, can walk safely, right. and, and you know, engage in community, in, and use the community right. services, the services that the, the town offers. But that, that building is condemned on the back side of the library, that house, that old house, I assume it's condemned. Yeah. Yeah. What is, Sorry about this one? Yes. 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 So what is the, Current owner's obligation to do something with that structure as opposed to letting it rot in place. Uh, other places I live, they get a notice if it's a nuisance. They either have to remedy the nuisance or the town doesn't send them, sends them a bill. Still don't own the land, but it might convince. I think I saw a figure of 100, value of 174K for the land. So I don't think enough uh, room, enough land in the center of town to have a See the center of the library and enough of room left over for uh, uh, mixed use shops and uh, residential. Well, that's not enough room. That's the question that we'll be trying to look at during the workshop, particularly, is uh, actually figuring out what would fit and trying to get some sense of is this totally impossible or not. I think. To your earlier point about thinking big about the, uh, the street configurations and re reorganizing things, I mean, there's a lot of what we call underutilized parcels. Um, and you don't have to think that big to think of some interesting ideas for creating space for a larger structure. And you have already the public parking over here and the, and the idea of a bridge across the street that's been discussed in the past. So I wouldn't rule it out. I guess the, the question for this group, though, is, is you know, is, is having the library and the community center something that you think really should be in the in the, in the town center? Less than that. Oh my gosh. Wait, so you said it has a downstairs and that's going to tear out. So, so but how much do you want for the library? We need 80,000 square feet of usable space. So yeah. the senior center got three. So you're looking at 11,000 square feet. That's like how some senior centers and they're so amazing. Right? I feel like our seniors deserve a good place. Right. So, so looking at the parcel that's there now, say you purchase and you had an option to purchase. Can we put a combined 12,000 square foot building, knocking that multi receive because it's been obliterated all the character that's gone from it, on those two parcels together? What would be the cost of something like that? We're talking about $3 million to renovate a building that doesn't include the senior center. You still get an abandoned building, it's derelict next to it. Isn't that parcel, if we combine the two of them enough together to get those two things in the center as an anchor? And then we talk about the retail slash apartment and the other 
arcade block? Well, that's, that's the question we're looking at. A couple other questions or comments in the back? One thing I mentioned was the privatization of the building. Has it been looked at if it was privatized? What kind of revenue would be involved with it to offset the cost of a nicer, larger facility for a combined center, somewhere near the center, but not in the center? I don't know if that's been looked at. It's something that we, we could look at in sort of a ballpark way, you know, the square footage, and you can imagine like typical rents, you know, ten dollars a square foot in Upton. So EDC, EDC did look at it just from a tax base perspective. If there were private development of a 40,000 square foot, you know, building, it would be multi-story, obviously. It would be somewhere in the neighborhood of a $12 million building and generate around $60,000 in tax revenue. Assuming you can attract tenants who are going to pay for that yeah, and keep the value of money. One more comment from the back. Well, I was just going to say, you know, kind of putting everything in this small footprint of land, most towns aren't doing that anymore. If you look at Hopkins, Senior center far out from the center of town. Acton is way out from the center of town. They're more concerned about things like parking and expansion for the, for the future. Because if we build what we need now, five years later, it's too small. There's no place to go. Right. Well, this is. Hopkinton is Hopkinton anymore. It's now Ashland. Right. And this is. We don't want that to happen to Upton. But I'm just saying. It's very true. Trying to create this on one piece of property doesn't make sense. I want to follow up with her comment. I want to follow up on her comment. And also something Lori said. Lori gave a good history of the, of the uh, trials and tribulations of trying to get a library in town. Um, the last time they went through it, they could not find the site. But since that time, the town has acquired, I think it's around a 10 acre parcel on Westboro Road. It was once thought to be part of Upton State Forest. Uh, it turned out it was actually, um, I think it was um, tax tariffs on that end was X story. But the town owns, now owns 10 acres on Westboro Road. It's far from the town center. But um, if people decided that you just couldn't do right by a library in the senior center in this location, you've got 10 acres on, on a significant road in town in northern part of town the town now owns. And, and, and one other thing, just, just a, a total second thing is, you know, there's a, a lot of talk about library and senior center, but I really hope that the historical museum isn't forgotten and that uh, they don't get a short shrift out of this process. They should get at least as much space as they have now. They're a great resource for the town, uh, a nonprofit. Um, they should be respected in this process. And as far as the library land, one of the things I heard was that empty space where the Thompson used to park that bus might be a kind of cross the street from Grove Street on Grove Street. Mm -hmm. uh, was a potential site for the library senior center rather than knocking down this and I really am not in favor a hay a hay is in the library service. And I don't know if this is the right kind of question. The question person asked me that you kind of alluded to is who does Upton think, what businesses do, does Upton think they're going to move their business to Upton? This person didn't think it would, not a big name, would be interested. Well, we're going to take a discussion of the, uh, the business yeah. possibilities a little bit if we get that far. So, so we, we, we do want to keep this moving, but I think my observation here is in uh, many other towns that we work in, is there's a natural conflict or tension between making it easy to drive someplace in the park, which is what invented the suburbs, because uh, it works really well for people in cars, or to try to put things so you can walk everywhere and not have to drive. Because we know that the places, the places with great value often are the ones where it's difficult to drive. Our historic centers all around the state, the highest values are in historic centers where it's miserable to be in a car. Uh, but once you park your car and you get out on foot, it's the best place and you'll pay extra to be there. So that's kind of a fundamental question for this group as we go forward. We're not going to resolve this tonight, obviously. Uh, but for every aspect of this, with the library senior center and other and how we treat the, the road system, et cetera, et cetera, there's this natural tension between 
do we want to satisfy that part of ourselves that is, spends a lot of time in the car and wants to just get someplace and park? Or do we want to satisfy that part of ourselves that likes, likes to sit in the sidewalk cafe, walk across to the library? I'm, I'm saying that because we all deal with that in our own lives all the time, where we choose to live, where we choose to work, etc. And it's, it's, it's not unusual. I, mean, I just think Upton is widespread enough mm -hmm. that most people don't have to get into the car, go to the library, or right. sure on Main Street. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, whether or not that helps the issue you're talking about. A couple more comments on this, then we'll move on. I agree with you 100%. Everyone's going to be driving if you live in the town to go down but as someone with younger kids, they love when I go to a town and I can go to a library and I can grab lunch with my kids after and spend money in my own town. It would be wonderful instead of doing it next around in town. Whether I get a coffee for myself, quick little sandwiches for myself with my three kids, or meet a friend for lunch, and we go to a story time after the library. So I think we need to think you just community-wise, you know, someone brought up what business is going to come to town. There's a community already here that wants to spend their own money in their own community. So I think right. keeping things local will enhance that part of it. Is there, is there a problem here? Yeah, one more. Uh, just a question um, for you guys is if the library and community and senior center is located in the center of town, so for, for our purpose here, does that make the space close to it more beneficial for businesses and everything like that? Does moving it out make the properties less valuable to businesses? Do we want to keep that population center going to there for the businesses that we're trying to attract? And that's a question for you guys, I guess. To well, I think that's part of the point you're making. It's just logically, uh, you think of your own lifestyles and where you go. It's nice to go to a place where you can do multiple things at once and also just have a nice experience. Meanwhile, we all go to Costco when we have to, right? Because we like getting in China paper towels for cheap. Um, but it is nice to have to be able to shop and do the things that you want to do in a place which is a real place. We do want to move on. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's going on in Holy Angels Church that's sitting mm -hmm. like here? And a property that sits on the other side of it. Who owns the property that's the side of the Holy Angels Church? Is that the one that owns that? The town. The town. So how many acres is there? Half acres? Before? Plus, what, how many footage you got in? What's the square footage of Holy Angel? Do you know that? It's at least as much as there is in which steam for I think it's about half the acre. It's half the acre? Yeah. And you mentioned no one ever goes to the, the park much over there, right? I mean, I've been over there and I've sat there and had a cup of coffee and I can sit there over an hour, a couple hours, I don't see anybody. But what I'm trying to get at is if you look at our property, Holy Angels has been sitting there and sitting there. And the property alongside is still sitting there. Does the VFW own that property? And so the town owns the property next to the, so just Holy Angels is 7,662 square feet. So the, the number that was previously given for appropriate library size is 8,000. There's a little more shot of that. But that's, you need 2,000 for plumbing and electrical. So it's really so well, changing one, one old church, which isn't adequate for another old church, which is not good. It could make a good temporary library down for the basement, because it does have already have ADA handicap accessibility. It would be a good temporary place if you ever tore down Rizdeen, um, but move the library there to the basement. I don't think the first floor would hold it. When do we expect the engineering? I saw in the paper the other day that the selectmen had approved appropriated some amount of money to have that building freshly analyzed to determine its viability. We're hoping the next three or four weeks have that complete. I mean, that, that, answer, that, that is, it seems to me is a uh, huge thing on what, if the building is not structurally sound and isn't economically feasible to repair, then that's part of It's a critical piece of information that we want to have to present to you. I mean, there's, a couple of things that are like that that we're looking at. I think one, one other thing somebody asked me about Holy Angels was if it was like too costly to here, can we just like keep the facade, the outside, and take the steeple off? I, I, I think those are all, you know, these are all really creative ideas that we'll get through, but you know, we have to start with the engineering study. I think the, 
but a critical point is, is it, val is it worth saving? How much will it cost to save? What would it cost to save? And I think for this process to write, so we're going to have time in the workshop to explore possible solutions. But I think what's really valuable for this group to, to do tonight is to try to kind of identify goals and values of what you think is important, right? Because as, you're, as you can see, there's lots of possible solutions to spin out. And each one of those solutions has lots and lots of ripple effects. Um, so when evaluating them, you need, you need some, some way to evaluate them. You need some, some points you want to hit. Um, and then just keep following well, what if we did this, and what if we did that, and what if we did this? You, it's really hard to come to right, so this is, it's going to take a while for, I think, all of us to understand how this process is going to work exactly. But, but I think this gets at what I was talking about earlier. You have, in almost any decision you have to make about the center, you have these natural internal conflicts, right? Mm -hmm. Is it good for people on foot? Is it good for people in cars? Is it plenty of room for the library to expand or not enough room for the library to expand? And each of those has costs and benefits depending on how you look at it. So what I think will really be valuable coming out of this process is if we have those, those values and criteria kind of down on paper that says, we think it's so important to have that activity in the, in the village center that we'll put up with the fact that there may not be enough parking right next to the building, that kind of thing. I'm not saying that's the decision we need to make, but that's the kind of um, sort of direction we want to get from this group about all of these different elements. It's like, do we, do we value having trees on the main street enough that we're willing to make the plow guy upset because he can't plow the road through all the snow where the trees are? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a conflict between having trees and being able to plow easily and have a place to store the, store the snow. And we could, I could probably brainstorm probably 50 different conflicts like that that come up at every town center, right? Mm -hmm. But there's another reason that we created the suburbs, right? To eliminate all those conflicts. Mm -hmm. The only problem is it creates unintended consequences by separating everybody and forcing everything into a car so that those of you with kids have to spend a lot of time driving them around instead of just going to one place. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So that's the kind of thinking that we're really after. We're not going to flesh out all the details and design everything in these meetings, but we want to get a sense of how do we direct the different consultants, how do we direct the different committees as they go forward with this work. So is it fair to say, if I'm just paraphrasing, that we're trying to figure out what's our desired future state? Yes. What we're trying to accomplish. Yes. We know the current state. We're trying to figure out what's our desired yeah, exactly. And within that future state, what do we value most? Is it creating a wonderful pedestrian center, even that doesn't work so well for people in a, you know, a tractor trailer? Or do we want to favor the tractor trailer so that people can get through town easily? I mean, that's an obvious example. But there's yeah. going to be a lot of them that are more subtle. And we're sharing you bits of information um, so, that, so that you can respond to that. And what we're hoping is to, to get from that is um, what the information triggers for you in terms of what's important about Upton Center. So you see the Milton or Stephen building, and you see that it needs work to become a, the library that you want. Does that make you say, well, forget it. It's not, the building's not important, the location's not important, so let's go with whatever the easiest path towards the library is. Or does it make you say, the building's really important, and it's really important that the library is in the center of town. So that's, you know, if at all possible, we want the library in that building. Or does it make you say, the building's really important, but the library doesn't need to be in the center of town. So what's really important is making sure that there's a viable use for that building. Um, I'm going to move on to this so we can we have to get through this material tonight. <laughs> I don't want to do this a third time. So this is the region of Andy's context. Um, Upton's there in the center. Yeah, and Upton Center is there in the center of Upton. Um, these areas in black dashes are what I think are sort of <coughs> shopping centers you all might frequent in surrounding towns. <coughs> do they, first of all, do those look about right? You might go to Milford to do your shopping. You might go to Menden. Northbridge, Hopkinton, Grafton, Melbourne, 
from this very western. Those are basically where most of the major supermarkets are in the area. Center. Up here? Yeah. Right here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just a small drop of that. Okay, so Westboro is the spot? It's another spot. It's another spot, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you, guys, since I've, I've lived on both sides of town now, and when I, I grew up on Westboro Road, I went to Westboro. I live over on South Street now, I go to Milford. So, <laughs> I never grew up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our, our impression is that there's not much reason to be passing through Upton other than to get to your own house or to someone else's house. So it's 12,000 cars a day down. It's 12,000 cars a day going up. It's, so it's not about 10,000 going down, 140 is about 12,000 going up Hartford Ave. Yeah, yeah about 12,000 going up Hartford So, but that's not 20,000 cars a day, right? That's not like shopping center cars a day. No. It's basically sub regional commuting traffic. Okay. So the implications for me about that are um, if you're looking to site a shopping center, like a, a regional place with a big box store and a supermarket, Upton Center is not the place for that, right? Upton Center is a place for local survey reach out. Yep. You guys all agree with that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is, this is water resources in Upton. Uh, there's the ponds, there's Center Brook coming down through here, there's another branch going that way. Uh, there's a stream coming down by the church crossing under the road right here into a culvert. Everything shown in purple in here is a FEMA flood zone. Um, either, it's either a 100-year flood or a 500-year flood. Um, and then the cross section, which you can't see in this map, is is um, wetland buffers. So what you can see in this map is there's a big flood zone and wetland complex back behind the BMW. Uh, there's a flood zone coming off of this branch of the brook. And then there's a flood zone behind the Holy Angels Church that basically stream the flood area and wetlands that separate the parking and the playground from Holy Angels Church. Um, and I can tell you that every, essentially every parcel within the center is within um, a 100 foot buffer to either the stream or the pond. Um, and so that's potentially a pretty, it's potentially a constraint to development. Um, and I think it's worth asking now, since we have somebody who's unofficially representing sure. the Conservation Commission in his personal opinion, whether that's... So Upton's regulations has a 100-foot no-build zone for perennial streams and... Okay, well, uh, we do, but there's a... The, the key thing to really think about here is that both under the town regs and the state wetland protection regs, this would be a new development. And those, uh, those restrictions, uh, 100 foot low barrel restrictions, really apply uh, most stringently to an area that is undeveloped. Uh, all those rules kind of drop the window with a, uh, with a redevelopment. And the Commission met with the EDC uh, last week, the Conservation Commission met with a couple of representatives, came in and talked with us. And I think the, the takeaway is you know, the Commission would expect conditions to be improved to some extent. You know, certainly we'll be looking for a 50 foot buffer, uh, some smaller buffer right now. There's almost no vegetative buffer along Center Brook through the whole, uh, you know, study area. Uh, it wouldn't be hard to improve conditions. Also, both on, on your, under state stormwater regulations, you'd be expected to, to improve the stormwater conditions as much as practical. Um, so I don't think, you know, the commission, the commission would, would Try to try to guide this in a environmentally friendly way, but there aren't really any constraints uh, other than um, you know 
working fully the, the stream. I mean, you might be able to pipe any sections of the stream. You could potentially put, put a bridge across it, like a footbridge across it. You have to uh, be very cognizant of the floodplains. If you fill a floodplain area, you have to replace that lost flood storage. Uh, you have to have a place on site to do that. That's probably going to be the biggest constraint. Uh, wetlands themselves, there's almost no vegetated wetlands on the site, so that's not really an issue. And just try to give the stream a bit of a buffer that it doesn't have now. And uh, also just, you know, you can't, like, park the stream. Those would be the constraints. I don't want to say, but 15 feet maybe, something along those lines. Something that you could, uh, you plant, plant some trees along the brook to get some shade. It's a fairly limited shade right now. Um, so, in the future, what role do you all envision these water resources playing in, in Upton Center? Are they just a thing that you work around when you're developing around the edges of them? Are they something that you highlight? Um, there's, a significant amenity. There's, there's significant amenity and tremendous opportunity for increased, you know, public involvement in the wetland, you know, in the and the enjoyment of nature, the valuation of nature. But it's, it's a unique resource. Not many towns, you could look at it from the opposite end of the spectrum, not many towns have these resources available to them, with a pond right in the center, with a stream right in the center, with a little battle and brook. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of value that could be created around the aesthetics of that. So, so what about the ponds? I mean, to me, this seems like a pretty unique part of the town center, but I, this is the first time I've heard anybody say anything in any of these meetings about the value of the pond, and that this has struck me up to now. What public access is actually? There is a lot of There isn't. There's a lot of It's kind of hidden. What's that? It's kind of hidden. It's hidden. So is, it, is that something, would you want to highlight it? Would you want to have it more of a feature? Or is it that you have beachfront elsewhere and so it doesn't matter? I would like to see it in the future, though. Myself, of course, I'm going to take mine. Yeah. So I just wanted to take a step back a second. Um, so it's not about, um, I think we're missing the point of, Nick Mike was making a clear that there is a way to build on wetlands or buffer property, you know, without destroying it or you know, modifying it in a sense, but then accenting it so that we do see it out the open. There's ways to landscape the property that you are highlighting, you know, nature, but doing it within a, a way of, that everybody can see it, but then you're also protecting it at the same time. That I think is just a, that's something that I think we should focus on later on, that that's a way that we can fix that or modify it, but it shouldn't be the constraint necessarily. I mean, we need to be concerned with the buffer zones and how we could be affecting it, but not about the decorating or anything like that. Right. That is something that we can way, way at the end, and we can be worried about that at the end. Does this happen in a, uh, out, a pub or a uh, restaurant that has an uh, outdoor uh, area that is right across the street where the center brook comes down that actually can actually walk right to and have uh, tables there or something that feature that uh, beautiful street with an addition of uh, 
there'll be some uh, trees planted uh, in that buffer zone. But it would be part of uh, some of the, I don't know if anybody's been to pubs in England, but they have them right, uh, the pubs are right uh, on the uh, banks of the river. So how about the, the value of the environmental resource itself? Like, is there anybody here to speak for the trees? Is this, um, in terms of things that need to be, that should be accommodated in the Upton Center, where does, where are the plants and the animals and the fish fall? Do they, are they, is it human use first and then that stuff later? Are they, do they come first and then human use first and then the next? They're really reading. Oh, exactly. Okay. I didn't see it. You don't see it. I'm not saying that's really useful. I'm just trying to get at the values of, of your values. We have a huge state forest and a tremendous amount of land already set aside. Uh -huh. So if we can use green space wisely to make our downtown look nicer. Um, Pratt Pond is a lot nicer pond. That's kind of a muddy, swampy area, that one. Um, it gets a little ripe in the summer, so it's not quite as nice as, say, Pratt Pond is. Is that the one on the back side of the Yeah, where the Beach is, which is a fantastic state. I think it's really important, even in the context of maintaining the social look of the town. I mean, the old crystal that was on the screen and all that, it's, I mean, it was all part of the community to begin with. It just doesn't really give the history of the town and where it's highlighted the things that were uh, yeah, I think the plan should definitely highlight connection to Heritage Park. Your, your plan would <coughs> probably be benefit if you would like shade that in green or something. People may not, do you know where it is? Can you point to people where it is? I am not. Uh, it's, uh, it, it has, it has uh, a bunch of, of shoreline on the pond. Through there. No, 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 it's further down. <coughs> the entire shoreline along the pond, almost, yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Um, and then there is a a seven acre or seven and a half acre site. You should really highlight that. And then that little shoebox shaped uh, um, area of floodplain uh, off of one forty. Um, that is a lot. Uh, probably an unbuildable lot, it's all floodplain. But it has you know, like, by the pond, it's probably the pond, right there, right there. Uh, uh, that has potential to provide access from the town center to Heritage Park. Um, years ago, maybe 15 years ago now, uh, there was a boy scout who tried to you know, go to Boardwalk uh, and get us access, um, get that access constructed, and the project failed because the owner eventually decided not to give the Boy Scout permission to do it. You know, it's not very complicated, but you just have to either you know, arrange something, purchase it, or arrange something with the owner to, uh, to get access. It should definitely be part of your uh, town development plan. Okay. I'm going to move on. So these are soils. Sorry. Um, this is the soils left. Uh, so important things to know here, this tan, air, tan area in the middle of Upton, these are relatively buildable soils. <coughs> the people who <coughs> originally are wise, were wise people. They knew their soils. They built it in the better soils early on. Um, the brown areas, those are muck soils. Generally not that great for building on. They're also mostly in the floodplain. And then the magenta colored soils um, have some limitations to development. Um, so you're looking at a picture of like the core there is pretty buildable and around the edges. They have limitations, but you probably work around them other than the muck soils. Um, and you don't really know what was happening in the back of the VFW before it got filled in and turned into basically urban soils of unknown origin. Now, can you point out for us on that map where the land is the Thompson property? That's a crossroads street from the library that the talk is about maybe putting the um, Combined building on. There's the mature farm building on the other side of the river. It says Kent and Fine. So this is the house people were talking about earlier that yeah. they say it's condemned, and then the other one is back here. That's a sort of depends. Sort of depends? Yeah, and you find 
Um, slopes. Um, again, the, the stream corridors have some pretty steep slopes in them. There's a band of steep slopes behind um, that property that I was just pointing at. From the to the right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there are steep slopes, as you know, along Main Street, basically in the front yards of those houses. Um, so these, these parcels going down Main Street are some pretty narrow parcels probably in part because they have steep slopes in their backyards. In the street. In the street. Um, and then getting across the stream here would, would take probably a bridge. Traffic mm -hmm. we've talked about. Um, collisions, so we mentioned this earlier. There, are, there have been traffic collisions, there have been um, crashes in the center often. It doesn't show up on sort of like a statewide level of being a place that has particularly a lot of collisions. And if you just look at the map, you can see that the collisions that have happened are relatively evenly spread throughout the area. Um, so you're not seeing like right in the center, there's a lot of bad stuff happening. Um, sometimes when areas are so crazy, people drive a little bit more carefully and there are actually less collisions than if, in some other places. Um, of these, the, the majority of them are property damage only. That means just you have fender bender. The car was damaged, but nobody was hurt. There were no fatal injuries, um, and there are a couple of, of non-fatal injuries. There also were not That's a great question. Um, I think it was five years, but I can check on it and get back to it. And of these, there were not any accidents involving pedestrians or bicycles. Um, that could be because those are generally not reported, could be because people aren't out walking or bicycling in a place that feels unsafe as it is. Um, does this have any particular meaning to, meaning to anybody in the room? Confirms what we've already talked about. Yep. Uh, so water infrastructure. There's there's water service pretty much throughout the area. Um, there is no sewer on Grove Street. The sewer line comes down south of the brook, and then there's no sewer up to um, up to Main Street. And there's also no sewer on Route 140 heading to east. So that was part of the reason that in the previous, previous library study, they looked at siting it over on the town owned parking and playground area, and they decided that bringing sewer to that was too expensive, and that was part of the reason the site was rejected, among other reasons. Um, so thinking about redevelopment along Grove Street, and thinking about redevelopment along 140 east of the center, sewer access is an additional cost to development there. If the new homes go in, with the 160 new homes go in, well, that would put a sewer line down in 40. Right. Yeah, so there's a... If, if, and I believe that... Did everybody hear him? No. no. Okay, so there's, there's a proposal for 160 homes. Um, I can't tell you where it is, but it's east. Of, uh, east yeah. over this way, somewhere in the other room. Um, and for that development to happen, they would probably need to bring in a sewer. I believe that project is in front of the planning board at this point, mm -hmm. hasn't been approved. Um, so that's potentially... The, the sewer for that project would be brought in along the railroad. Along the railroad? That's what's proposed. That's the proposal. We're trying to negotiate and come through the board. Okay. I think it would be helpful, because I've heard, I think at the January meeting, there were a couple of developments planned or Look at. If we could get a macro picture of the town where some of these other developmental things that are going in, mm. they might drive uh, infrastructure improvements that this project has been bent, i.e., the sewer line going down on board. The common developer, odds are, trying to put in a septic system in that marshy land ain't going to work too well. Right. So, 
teachers, we shot ourselves in the foot before we got out of the starting line. So, uh, yeah, I think a, a, a little more macro sense of what, what else is happening in town that right. could impact uh, decisions here. I think but based on what I know, I'm going to make the revenue measure that is on the effect of the local minutes is finished now. Um, there's the policy market of the way up by Shiny Rock, and there's the one we just talked about, which is almost at the intersection of the lane where it comes up. The, which the sewer goes on the ground like that. Those are the major developments. They're going to have an impact on the demographic and on the population of the town. It's not a big city of Right. Uh, I was going to say that the, uh, that also reflects potentially what you want to do in terms of zoning in the town center mm -hmm. and what kind of uses. We'll be talking more about uses as we go forward and whether they have more residential, like in the town center. But one of the reasons is if you have more activity and more density, then you share this cost of extending the sewer line. And it becomes less of a burden on any one use because you're sharing among multiple uses. Let's not get too dogged down. Uh, a lot of you know about zoning already. There's a write-up in the report. You could pour over it. I don't want to dwell on this too much because basically for anything to happen in the town center, ultimately, we're going to have to set aside the existing zoning and move on, mm. I think. But the message for you is that there's very little that's really possible under the current zoning that's going to help us build our way out of any problem or make the center really any more dynamic or, or vibrant. Um, and so you can look at the maps that are in the report and uh, get back to us with any questions. Sounds good. Any, that given that, is there any points anybody wants to make? Uh, I have one point. We all know that every time you make major and construction improvements, that in itself, and people coming in and out of the town, they notice that and they say, oh, I want to move out of the city and then move out here now. And with that mindset, then everything else, as far as numbers go, increases. So anything that we decide to do in the center here in town is going to expand outside the town to the center, right? Which means we can have more traffic. Population is going to be larger. Can't stop that. It's on a growth pattern because I've been sitting in this town for almost 15 years and I've watched it. Mm -hmm. And right now, what are we at? About a little over 7,000. And when I was in here, it was probably maybe about 5,500. 5, so, so right now, uh, I, I think it's a good idea. You can't stop growth. But anything you do in the town to, in, to improve the infrastructure, is going to bring population out here. There's no doubt about it in my mind. And when you do that, then you have to have the businesses in town here to service some people. Mm -hmm. And right now, we ain't got nothing. We don't. Right. We were down in Maple Street when they let the train guy in down there, mm -hmm. right? And the town says, well, we're not in, we're not in the real estate business to buy that land. Mm -hmm. But there was a proposal on the table, right, to make that land down there like a little mini mall. Mm -hmm. right. And that got thrown out. You're right, because that's, that's not necessarily a problem. If, if the development, development is pushing up 1495, it's an opportunity. But if you don't know anything about it, people will find places to buy houses in town. We're writing 550 seniors mm -hmm. in the current plans. So they, they, if we don't have a center, they'll push up to North Bridge and pop in the center now. Yeah, I think one of the reasons we have this process set up is that we'll have more meetings to talk about the implications yeah. of of this. I mean, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the workshop on the 23rd. In that workshop, we're going to start brainstorming ideas, yeah. various improvements. Let's, yeah. let's eliminate all the roads and make everybody walk through the center. Well, what I'm saying is the growth is coming anyway. Right. We have to decide whether we're going to attract up to Uptonites to Upton or pushing away. Right. So what, what I'm saying is that we're going to try to get all the different ideas that we can down on paper and literally put them on the wall, all the different alternatives, and then think those through as to who's, who's winning, who's losing, what's the benefit for a typical resident, what's the benefit for business, and then try to find that sweet spot where you balance all those different elements. I mean, that's what this planning process is around. So, or about. So what we're going to do with the workshop is try to come up with all those different alternatives. At the next working group meeting following that workshop, we're going to bring those ideas back to you with our own recommendations. And then we'll be having a couple meetings to talk about what you think is, again, the best way to balance these different needs and desires and opportunities against potential impacts, right? 
I do want to point out one thing. I think one thing that hasn't been stated um, is what happens if you do not know? Okay. Everybody needs to keep in mind that the Thompson property is for sale. The town needs to do something with Holy Angels. Something has got to happen with the Racine building. If you don't choose to do anything, you're making a choice. And if you say you want to have things outside the center of town and you're going to abandon the center of town, think about what that's going to look like. So, you know, it's, it's not, a, 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 not doing anything is a choice in itself, and a, yeah. one with big consequences. Just look at the abandoned house behind us, Steve. Exactly. You know, it's an eyesore. to be able to navigate that. So earlier we looked at that complete streets plan. It didn't show the improvements on Route 140 because they're not eligible for that grant. The only thing that's eligible for the grant is local streets. So that's all they looked at. Likewise, the Route 140 project is only going to look at Route 140. It's not going to look at the local streets because they're not eligible for the TIC. So um, you're going to be working, the town is going to be working with the funding sources that are available and trying to fit its needs into those, into those grants. And you have to have a really clear picture of what you want to do that. So let's move on to the, to the workshop planning. Um, these are the objectives that we've identified for the workshop. Curious about your opinion. So share what we've learned about us in the center and what you've heard so far from the community. Talk about social, economic, and environmental trends that are going to be affecting Upton. Um, discuss the shared goals for key issues. Learn about what other towns are doing related to the economy and new economic factors. Um, and then brainstorm physical planning ideas and design ideas for new homes, businesses, traffic, green space, streetscape, open space, connectivity, library, community center. Does that sound right to you all? Is there anything you want to add or take away? One thing's missing is historic preservation. Okay. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> if feasible, some of those buildings may not be worth saving. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to write it. I'll 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 so it's still recognizably the same place. It has the same feel. You can tell from those old pictures that it's the same just right away. I mean, it's like up to today, right away. You want to be on our end, I think we should present this to townspeople. Our end is to preserve that look and bring a modern product to the downtown at the same time. Do both. 
as Google. Because yeah, this is a key question. And it's another one of those, we're, we're seeing with that too, we've talked about that a little bit, but the last meeting is the cost of construction really affects what developers can do. Mm -hmm. And that also is related sometimes to whether you do a contemporary building or a historic building, whether you do a rehabilitation of a historic building at great cost because you want to hold on to this precious place, or whether you want to do a, a cheaper, often contemporary style building because you want to lower the cost of rents and bring people in to have businesses. So it's, it's tricky, and that's one of the things we're going to be talking about as we go forward. So I think this, the physical planning would not new homes and all that stuff can't be committed to just up in the center because the, the boundaries, whichever subgroup from January, you know, wherever you drew the line, mm -hmm. isn't going to be enough to carry on what I think I've heard everyone saying in the last two or three meetings. So, well, what we had hoped is that this wider map mm -hmm. would capture enough of the context to talk about some of the key, it's really connectivity issues, walking trails, the sort of the, the natural corridors. Um, the connections to Heritage Park and perhaps other other parks, and then the road connections. But I think what I hear him saying is that there aren't enough, maybe there aren't enough You can't put all of that stuff in the available space here, <coughs> and so whatever. So some of these business, maybe one of these things, but I think you're going to need to look at elsewhere in town where maybe more homes, I see a lot of appear to be empty lots, and I understand those are all private you know, and stuff. And you're, you're talking about a developer coming in, so you should have to look at whatever the zoning rules are, and whatever, <coughs> you know, however it applies to that particular set of parcels or that zone. Um, so I think if you're trying to, what I, my sense is you want to improve the look of up and center. To capture, I heard, I think early on in the process, uh, New England charm the charm of an old New England town. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what you're, my sense is that you're trying to get up and center to have that reflect that, but bring that new vitalization to all of the town. Uh, if you're talking significant economic impact to the town of Well, well unfortunately, but so zoning was a big piece of this. Okay. Mm -hmm. The way we decided to go with this process is that there have been various different attempts to try and do rezoning, and without having a shared vision, they they fail. And so the process that we're engaged in to try and build consensus about what you want to see should inform the zoning process. Right. We will need, to, right. we obviously will need to do the rezoning in the in the center of town and other places. So I will say for me, uh, many of the people on the CBA, of which I'm one, uh, was very friendly to this project. I think uh, the wife of one of the ZBA members is one of the only economic development council. Sorry. So uh, you should say that the, the ZBA is, is supportive of this process as well. Uh, you know, we recognize, that I think the EDC, ZBA, uh, other boards in town recognize limitations of what we have right now that's constraining our ability to change the town in a, in a, in a productive and proactive way. So. The, again, this is all. This process is all about inform, you know, in, informing decisions that will be made in the future. Someone said earlier, "What do we want to see?" This is ideally what we're working on is a vision for the town 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. You know, the people that were shaping the Knowlton, you know, when Knowlton was here, or whether it was Hopedale and uh, what was happening there, they were looking a long ways out. That's why the town took the shape that they did. Right now, the zoning we have, we're getting what we zoned for. You know, and it's just going to continue to be more of the same. So again, this vision is, vision process is really important. It's really hard to come to consensus. I, re I realize that, but the idea is that at least you're bouncing around the ideas. You're getting a, a sense of what shared vision might look like, and you, you, you should be able to come together with trying to move this in a productive way. Right. So the interesting dynamic that happens in planning is that towns that do a comprehensive plan for the whole town. They get partway through the process and say, we really have to look at these specific areas within the town. Are we no, I'm, not to solve the I'm not suggesting that we try to do the entire thing. I'm saying this is just the seed corn. It's an incremental approach. For 
that should impact the rest of town because we make it more effective to come down. Right, well, you know, I, I'm agreeing with you in that my observation is that towns that do the whole town that realize, we really have to look at these centers because that's where lots of stuff is coming together. And towns that focus just on the centers realize that, wow, this has implications for the whole town and schools and utilities and everything. And we really need to do a town-wide master plan. And that, that's just a natural thing about planning. So yeah. is there anything else that we're starting with right now? Workshop objectives? Or should well, I just want to address what you said about the long term. I'm focusing more on five to ten years. The town population will probably be close to 9,000 by then. When you come to, come to town, I can speak from the experience of one of the seniors I'm banging about, and the time and money. Um, our first impression of the town, we drive through it, is that it? Um, I want to change the first impression of people who come here five years from now. Um, so that they now have, oh yeah, that's the place I want to go to here. What is it you mean in town? You should have a center. And you should have a center that people remember and feel connected to because they're within. So, Dylan, for, for the workshop, um, what what do you envision the time frame? Uh, we want to hand out the. Uh, yeah, so you each got a flyer to look over and see if you have any comments on, and then this is the proposed schedule. Okay. Um, so. Going to go back to the list really quickly. One thing that was missing: we have housing, but we don't have affordable housing. Right. You know, that needs to be an important part of this discussion. The town has, a, you know, a deficit of affordable housing. The air, you know, Massachusetts has a deficit of affordable housing. They have a deficit of workforce housing. So, you know, it's not just enough to talk about housing. It needs to be housing that's targeted. There's always going to be enough housing for all the people to buy. There just isn't going to be enough housing for people that want to stay in town that are on limited incomes or, you know, or raising young families to, to come and start here. So. Affordable housing has to be part of the concept. We, we talked about that last time. And I've heard, honestly, I've heard mixed opinions. In the first meeting we had, I asked my group about affordable housing, and they said, no, that's totally not appropriate for Upton Center. Um, your housing production plan says that Upton Center is the appropriate place for affordable housing. It should be a priority place for, for affordable housing. Um, I just have a comment on the on the workshop, um, your agenda starts at 9 o'clock, and your meeting goes yeah, at the top of it starts at 10. So <laughs> you might want to figure that out. <laughs> Frame four, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's starting at 9. I guess I'm going to go to the Did we really want to charge mine? Or right, so somebody's you, you had published ten previously. It was ten previously. Just one more quick. In the workshop, it would be good to talk a little bit more about um, the environment law set and uh, how we have downtown. Mm -hmm. possible concept plans for the center. We bring them to the meeting on the 8th, which is the following meeting. You guys identify your preferred plan and what revisions you want to it. We revise it. We come back a week later with the final plan. Um, so we're going to go over And that goes to the board of selectmen. I mean, to the town meeting. Ideally, if you can't agree on one plan, then we have one plan with alternatives, or we have more than one. But it's kind of up to the discussion that we have those last couple of meetings in April. 
Both sides. Somebody, so somebody emailed um, to me about the, the vision statement. I had sent out a sample vision statement and they asked, are we just doing a written vision or is there also drawings involved? And the answer to that is that there will be written material and there will be visual pictures as well. Um, so we're walking through the proposed schedule for the meeting. So 9 to 9.15, introductions, 9.15 to 9.45, presentation about Upton Center and trends for the future. 9.45, a discussion of shared goals and guiding values. Um, 10 to 10.45, there'll be station activities. I'm going to talk about those in a second. And then another 45, and then uh, another hour and 15. That's where the problem is. Second round of station activities. That should be another 45 minutes. Um, and then lunch. And presentation and expired case studies. <laughs> yeah, it's an hour and 45. There's your hour. And then presentation of that the facilitators from those various station activities will, will give about what they said and what came out of them. And then a third round of station activities where we're trying to dive more into the details of things. And then a final wrap up and, and discussion. Okay. So, so it works. <laughs> we're going to have the second round of extra hours. This is going to be at Town Hall. It's going to be in the, the big room and whatever other use rooms we can use. So are we starting at 10 or 9? I think we're starting at 10. Yeah. We just yeah. found an extra, yeah. extra hour. Yeah. Extra hour in there. Never let the boss do anything. That's the, that's the answer. <laughs> so the possible stations we were thinking of are one that's a modeling exercise. Right. So the idea is um, rather than have everybody sit in just small groups, and talk about the same issues like we did at the first big public workshop. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll divide into however many groups we have um, or, or need, however many people we have, we'll divide them into perhaps seven or eight groups. And then those groups will circulate around stations which will be set up around the room. Are we going to use the big, the big room? So we, might, we also might use some of the breakout, breakout rooms we could use this room even. Anyway, so each, each station will be sort of a microcosm within different themes of the stuff we've been talking about. So we might have a station that's focused on the architecture and design of the center. And so we'll have, we'll, we'll show you some of the elements. But I'll basically, you go there and talk about that specific theme, and then you'll get a choice to go to one of the other stations for the second part. So everybody won't do all of them, but everybody will do two of them, right, and collectively. So that's the idea, you sort of circulate around. It's very fun and, and quick, and we'll make the time go quickly, even though I put an extra hour in there, you wouldn't even notice. <laughs> so <laughs> one of the stations is sort of getting a handle on, you know, what's the overall uh, master plan for this? Where do we have opportunities to do infill, to put new buildings? Uh, where do we want to, you know, put those new streets and so on? And really think about how it all comes together on a sort of conceptual level. and what, we like to do for that kind of thing is, is give people kind of a physical, a combination of a big plan and a physical model that has these styrofoam buildings on it. And then we give people buildings that aren't attached to it, that don't exist, but could, and let them move those around. And so for instance, this is a site that we were working on over in Grafton. And this is what it looks like today. There's that new Cumberland Farms as you come in off of the, the exit on the pike to the Millbury exit. There's that big Cumberland oh, yeah. Farms and there's this really messed up old commercial complex. And so they want to promote redevelopment of this commercial complex. So we looked at this. This is the existing. And then these are some of the, uh, the, uh, the alternatives that came out of the workshop process which we then use, illustrated using the model. So this one is sort of new buildings up along the street, a big parking lot in the back, some nice buildings over here that might be residential on the back part of it facing the existing residential district. But we actually can bring model pieces like this with the blank map of Upton Center, which this is actually at the same scale. So we'll put in some of the key buildings that already exist. We'll bring a pile of potential future buildings. And people at that station can sort of experiment. Well, well what if we put buildings along the, the front of the 
the parking lot over here? What if we pulled this building out and turned it into a park? You know, what if we did, you know, extend buildings up along here or did something different with this? So it's kind of a, an opportunity to do some broad scale brainstorming. And what we find is because you're, you're working with the sort of simple elements, the discussion tends to focus on the simple sort of shaping of space by buildings. Like we talked at the earlier workshops about how this really was kind of a town square, completely surrounded by buildings at one point. And now there's a lot of sort of gaps and things and potential gaps in the future. So how can we fill those gaps and put new buildings in and what might that look like? So we'll do this at that station. And again, it's, and then that becomes something which then can eventually be used to help illustrate the, the, the product. So the second station we're thinking is to focus on issues of traffic and parking and uh, the so-called streetscape design. So that's the one where we can look at different options for rerouting 140, closing off some streets, adding new streets, doing a roundabout. We can bring some sort of cut to scale roundabout pieces that people can experiment with. And, uh, and then also talking about the design of the street itself. Do we want to have parking on the street? Or which streets would have parking, which wouldn't? Um, how could that affect it? Where do we want to have trees planted along the streetscape? And that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so, so each of these stations will have a facilitator from our team, or hopefully including some uh, volunteers, who can help ask some questions which we'll put down and help people go through these exercises. So again, it'll be about 45 minutes for each one. So the third one is uh, what we're calling design strategies for architecture and public spaces. And this one will have several different uh, sort of exercises which we've done elsewhere. This is one we did in uh, Florence last fall. And you see these people are taking red and green stickers and putting them on photographs of different kinds of buildings and different kinds of public spaces to indicate which ones they like and which ones they don't like. It's a very quick way to sort of poll people on, yeah, this three-story mixed-use building looks really nice. I'd like to see that in the center. Or this one is really bad. I wouldn't want to see that one. And then also, we've, we've done often is to take photographs of actually the existing uh, buildings going down the road. In this case, it was actually a, a drawing. But in this, for this, we'll probably just take photographs and show the facades of these buildings and the way they go down the road, show the spaces in between the buildings, like the empty lots, and then let people uh, put red and green dots about features that they really like, buildings that they like, parts of those buildings that they think are working well, and then conversely, things that they don't like, things that aren't working well. And we find these kind of exercises really help people to express values that they don't really know they have, like what kind of building they think fits in the, the town center. And, right, so the fourth one then, we're going to have a station just for the architecture and discussion of the community center, if you think this is a good idea. So but I think it is. Yeah, this is one thing that concerns me a little bit. There's so many rumors out in the community about if this building's going to exist or we're committed to it already or if we don't know if that's the best solution. So um, it makes me nervous to think that, I don't know if that decision's already made. I think it has a lot to do with size. I know we're trying to keep trying to put a lot of things in it and maybe the size of the land, I think, seeds they still in. I'm getting a sense that we think that the land down there is going to be too small for tonight. You know, when the is has really some of that too, so I don't know if it's going to support what we're hoping or if we're going to end up figuring out that we can find a great library and put a senior center over there or a new center over there or if it's better if they go together, I don't know. But I, um, I don't know how you want to, if you're going to structure that to be the way we investigate this one idea, that would be good for us to know, and I don't know if this group would like it to be more open than that and have more ideas being talked about at that station. It's, we're trying to give you an opportunity to engage with this big group of people that hopefully is going to come to this meeting. So whatever your committee thinks is the best use of that space, that time, is what you should do. 
you know, some people, like this group just found out from the presentation we gave today that there are other things that are already possible that the, everybody who's coming on the 23rd doesn't even know. So. I think we can hopefully fairly clearly state what it is and what it is. You know, we're hoping to accommodate one or both of those uses within the town center, but we don't know if one or both of them is going to fit. Uh, but let's talk about what we'd like to see within the community center, what we'd like to see within the library. Let's talk about how the existing library works and what we like or don't like about it. So it could be fairly simple or it could be as complex as you want. What kind of services seniors need? What kind of meeting space for right. the town? I know that meeting space has been a big part of our discussions all this time as well. It's a great meeting. So at this point, it more, might be more about questions of programming, like what do we want to have happen within those structures, rather than the design or whether it fits on the site. All right, so I'll ask a question real quick. What parameters did, was given to the architects who were doing the concept design or project that's, I think, $40,000 um, that was approved in May? Yeah. What parameters did you give them in designing the library slash city? Is that what from them? Yes. But, but I don't think they're going to be any parameters. No, you, you have, have to, to work with the feasibility. They're going to work with the feasibility committee. They're going to try to decide what services are needed and what square footage do we need to meet those services and then come up with conceptual drawings of that facility and location. So, but what I hear uh, Peter and uh, discussing is having that as a specified station on the 23rd and if those two collection of concepts are not fairly synced or close people are going to sense a bait and switch kind of thing going on um, that was a pretty tumultuous meeting in may um, kind of thing and so it, it would strike me that if I don't know when you're meeting with, with the, the architect schedule. But, you know, if you're suggesting that the town, the, those folks that are interested on the 23rd, come up with and answer those very questions, that that becomes the theater for what your discussions with the architect. I mean, you know you see what I'm saying? It just seems. Yeah, well, we certainly we want to avoid any misconceptions or the idea of certainly a bait and switch. I, th I think we can deal with that just the way we set up the questions. Be clear that um, I think everybody hopes that the library can be put in a place where the town owns the land and we don't have to pay for it. Everyone hopes that it can contribute to quality of life for everybody in the community. And we're certainly within this group going to be looking at how it could fit in the, the, the center. But for the purpose of this workshop, I think we have to ask the questions that you need to know now and then make clear that there's certain things you're not going to know until later on. I think that's yeah. in regard to that, um, to, like, to inform everybody that's here about this, because this sounds like it's one of the most important things on the table for the discussion on the plan, is if the library stays in the existing building and it doesn't become a senior center, a senior center is still going to be needed elsewhere. What's the square footage cost of that? But like, there's, there's a few different options there that we should be informed on. Like, if it stays, what are we going to need for buildings otherwise? If it's a joint building, what kind of square footage is going to need? And do we need to allocate space for it? And what, that, and what is that going to cost? There's going to be some rough estimates or something that can push All that is going to be part of the feasibility study that architects are working with, taking the lead on. So we'll, we'll talk some more. We'll figure out the best way to set this up. I hope that you would agree to make this part of the workshop in some way. So we'll send out the um, draft flyer or the draft corrected schedule to you guys. Um, and it would be great if you could give comments by the other three things. You gotta go. What time is it? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. My phone died, so I can't leave. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, just quickly, and then you can respond. We just don't want to show up and have people say, oh, this was a terrible idea. So the last three stations we're talking about, one of them will talk about sort of economic development issues. We've got a lot of facts and figures from CMRPC about the market conditions. And so they can present that information. People can talk about what they'd like to see in terms of business growth in the center. The other one, six is the one, well, let's jump to seven. That's sort of looking at the, open, the overall open space connectivity 
how these greenways might come in, how we connect to different trail systems and so on. I assume that you all agree that that would be a good idea. And then six is the one which we thought might be a good station, but we're not quite sure, which is really to look at the sort of social and cultural issues around the center and talk about who should this place be for um, and how do we bring them in? What kind of events do we need to make this a more diverse place? Do we want it to be a more diverse place socially or economically? Um, and then how does, how does all that contribute or take away from the quality of life? Do you think that that would be a, yeah, a good right. station? Mm -hmm. yes. So I just want to make sure that nobody suddenly realized, what are you doing? So we're hoping that the public comes to this meeting. Yep. For the hours of 10 to 6, the entire time they're going to come? 10 to 3. 10 to 3. And does any of the public know about this just yet? 10 to 3. Yeah, that's yes. the yeah. So yeah. we're going to go back and invite people to come to me in yep. two and a half ish weeks for six hours? It'll be in the time prior. It you know, will be advertising on the a flashing board. Is it enough for me to send emails to my community right now? I mean, this is pretty much. What's that? Can I send emails to my community? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's part of the ambassadorship we're hoping you do, yeah. spread the word. You know? So send, don't send out that uh, <laughs> agenda, but you can send the flyer, which talks more generally. It's only five hours, including lunch. So it'll be a lot of time. <laughs> ten, ten to three, right? But this is the flyer. Yep. Yes. I assume so. 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 I what kind of architecture we think fits, mm -hmm. which will be about what kind of architecture we want to protect and preserve. Right, right, right. And that kind of thing. So that'll, that'll probably fall. Well, both two and three has it's gonna, historic. Yeah, it comes out of all of them. Comes together. Right. right. Well, you're modeling your master plan. If you're wiping out all your historic buildings, you're not doing historic preservation, you're preserving them all. It's going to, it's a value, if it's a value that's important to update, it's going to come out in all those stations. Can we stick the historic museum in there, Mario? Should that be part of number four? Because we need to make sure there's a place for that, too. It'll be in number six, too. I mean, cultural events, and you know, I think yeah. that okay. you know, the social and cultural issues are where we're going to want to be. Yeah, each of these will have some questions. And so what, as we get closer, we can email you some mm -hmm. questions for each of these stations and talk a little bit about more of what's going to be included. And then you can review that by email and get back to us. Um, I do really appreciate your your attention tonight. I know this is really like eating your vegetables. We're <laughs> <laughs> waiting for all this data, but what we're hoping is that you can all become experts then. So when we do go to town meeting, um, there'll be 40 people in the room who really know what's going on, who can turn to their neighbor and say, yeah, I was part of this. Here's the explanation. Can I, can I say to myself, congratulations on exposing this to this. We need to know this. We need to know the constraints. And uh, this is the outcome of the also one of the key topics in that economic development, marketing, and branding. 
Mm. Yes, station, so maybe we should add taxes to that to that list to make it explicit. Yeah, taxes yeah. and costs. Because mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. we want to. And also maybe where there's parts of money that are going away that we can move over to. I think there's some of that over to. Well, to the point that I was mentioning before, what's the cost of doing nothing? That's any part yeah. of this government. Right. I mean, the cost of doing nothing really should be a, a big part of your, your uh, conversation with people. You should have learned the first thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I see a lot of people itching to go. You yes. got your bags and your wraps, your yeah, are on. Just put this one the railway you have. Thank <laughs> you. 